Okay, so the next thing you'll see here is a visual of the different types of Riemann sums. And actually, I mentioned, you know, you can do a trapezoidal Riemann sum. I don't have a picture of that here. What you see down below are just the rectangular Riemann sums. Um, and so you can have a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum, or a midpoint Riemann sum. Um, sorry, trying to adjust my camera there for you. But a left Riemann sum is when you draw the rectangle so that the left, the top left corner of the rectangle touches the function value. Okay, so you'll see the top left here, the top left here, and so I'm drawing my rectangles kind of anchored to the left. We can also anchor our rectangles using the right corner, the upper right corner of the function, and so this would be a right Riemann sum. Or we can situate it so that if my interval goes, let's say, from here to here, I can find the midpoint of that interval and then make that my anchor point. And so my rectangle kind of crosses the line um, and uses the midpoint as the height of my rectangle. So in this situation, the left, um, the left end point of the rectangle is the height of the rectangle. Here it's the right and here it's the midpoint. Okay, so those are, that's a left, right, and midpoint Riemann sum. And one of the questions you'll be asked is, when do we get an overestimate and when do we get an underestimate? And I want to I wanna really caution you here, looking at these pictures that I gave you. This is one specific example of a function. Okay, So when I'm looking at this and I look at the left Riemann sum, I see that I've got some white space underneath here. So this is definitely an underestimate. Whereas this one here, when I did the right Riemann sum, my rectangles actually go above. They go higher than my function value. I've got some like extra space here that I really don't want to be included in my area. So this is an overestimate. And then this one here, this is probably the one you're looking at and going, oh, well, that's, that's kind of perfect because we have a little bit over but then a little bit under. And I don't know for sure that like this area exactly compensates for this area, but it's probably pretty close, right? Um, in this particular example, the, the midpoint probably does a pretty good job of compensating for that over-under estimate, but that's not always necessarily the case. It really depends on how your function is drawn. Okay, so if you flip to the next page in your notes, um, the next thing you should see is some pictures. Okay, and again, I'm, I've got a point to make with these. Um, here I've got this one and this one are both examples of left-handed Riemann sums. And these two are both examples of right-handed Riemann sums. Okay, so you'll notice the left corner of the rectangle is touching the function, but in this one, the left corner is also the one touching the function. Here I have a right Riemann sum, okay, so the right corner touching the function, but here I also have the right corner touching the function. But you'll notice that this is an underestimate, this is an overestimate, and they're both left Riemann sums. So what's the difference here? Okay. What really matters here when we're trying to figure out if we have an over or an underestimate is which direction my function is going, okay? If I have an increasing function, my left Riemann sum is always going to be an underestimate. So when I'm increasing, okay, and that's both of these, these are both increasing. When I have an increasing function, my left Riemann sum is an underestimate, my right Riemann sum is an overestimate. But when my function is decreasing, it's the opposite. When I have a decreasing function, my left-handed Riemann sum is an overestimate and my right-handed sum is an underestimate. I would not recommend draw, or memorizing those, okay? What I do anytime I'm asked one of these questions is I visualize this, and sometimes I even sketch it. Sometimes I just sketch, like, okay, it's an increasing function. If I do a left Riemann sum, so I draw my rectangles like this. Are those going to be sitting under my function or over my function? Okay, and when I can visualize this, I can see that I'm going to have spaces, and so that would be an underestimate. Okay, so I guess let me fill these in real quick. This is under, this is over, this is over, this is under. But again, the over-under estimate really has to do with whether your function is increasing or decreasing because that's what's going to control whether your left or right is above the function or below. 
Okay, let's talk about how we're actually going to calculate these things. Okay. So this says approximate the integral from 0 to 3. And so again, what that's really saying is find the area under the curve between 0 and 3 of this function, 9 minus x squared, which is what this picture is. Okay, and we're using each type of Riemann sum. Um, it doesn't specify what size of interval I want to use, but if I'm going from 0 to 3, I think I'll just do this with a unit length of, of 1. Like I'll split it into 3 intervals, okay? I'm just digging for a marker here that I can use. Um, so I'm going to make my rectangles go from 0 to 1, from 1 to 2, and from 2 to 3. And if I'm trying to do a left-handed Riemann sum, I want this rectangle to start here. And I'm going to go across to the 1. And then for from 1 to 2, this would be my left corner. And then from 2 to 3, this would be my left corner and this would be my rectangle. So this is definitely going to be an overestimate because I have this extra space up here which I knew because this is a decreasing function. Okay. But what I'm doing now is calculating the area of these rectangles. So I would say um, my unit length or my base length down here on each of these is just a 1. So I'm going to say it's 1 times this height, which is 9. By the way, if I didn't know for sure that was 9, like if I couldn't read it off the graph, I could also use my function, right? This is when x is equal to 0. So I could say 9 minus 0 squared, which is 9, okay, plus 1 times, what's this height? Well, that looks to me like it's 6, 7, 8, but let's just double check. If I were to plug 1 in here, I would have 9 minus 1 squared, so that is 8. And then one more, I have a length of 1, and then my height here is at 5. And again, that's because f of 2 would be equal to 5. If I put a 2 in here, 9 minus 2 squared is 5. Okay, so 1 times 9 plus 1 times 8 plus 1 times 5 is going to be 22. And that would be 22 square units. Okay. Let's do it again with a right Riemann sum. So this time I'm going to anchor my rectangles using the right-hand corner. So when I'm going from 0 to 1, the right side would be at the 1. And so this rectangle is going to sit like this. And here my right corner is going to sit right here. And this one, my right corner is going to sit right at the bottom. So I actually have like a very flat rectangle. Okay. And that is going to leave me with an underestimate because now I have all of this blank space to deal with, right? I've got this space and this is actually area that I'm missing in my estimate. Um, again, my base height down here is 1 for each one of these. So this is going to be 1 times this height this time is 8 plus 1 times 5. And for my last one, my height here is technically zero, right? This is sitting right on the axis. So this third rectangle doesn't give me any additional area. And so then I would say this is 13. Okay, what I do want to make sure we understand, because this is going to lead into like how we find the actual area. All of this so far is just estimating. But when I'm trying to find the actual area, um, I can use the fact that this is an overestimate and this is an underestimate. And I can say that my actual area then must be somewhere between the two. So my actual specific area I know is somewhere between 13 and 22. And then there are ways that we can narrow our answer down. Like we can make our answer more precise coming in from both sides. Um, and that should sound familiar to you, the idea of approaching the correct value from either side. Um, that is definitely a calculus concept. So, okay, I think the next couple of questions are still working with this same function, but now we're going to look at doing a midpoint Riemann sum and a trapezoidal Riemann sum. And this is probably going to require um, a little more algebra here using the function itself. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say that my, my interval here is from 0 to 1, so I'm going to have a length of 1. But my midpoint then would be at 0.5. So I'm going to kind of follow this line up 
and that point right there, which I'm going to have to calculate the value of that. I don't know exactly what it is. That's going to be where I put the height of my rectangle. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Halfway between 1 and 2 would be like 1.5. So I'm going to follow this. Really, I'm following it up, but it's just hard to draw that way. Here's my midpoint. And so this rectangle is going to sit like this. And then my midpoint between 2 and 3 is here. And so my midpoint is like this. And this might give us a better estimate because I've got kind of an underestimate and an overestimate that might cancel each other out. Again, I can't say for sure that this is going to be the exact area, but it's, it's pretty good, okay? So um, when I do this, again, my length on each one of these is 1, which actually what I can do then is just say I'm going to do 1 out here and then add together all my heights. Okay, so I can say my height 1 plus my height 2 plus my height 3. Um, and I, it's a 1, so honestly, mathematically, it's not going to make that big of a difference. But if I had a different base length down here, this is a big time saver to be able to just put that number out in front instead of having to multiply it by each one individually. Um, you're not always going to have intervals that are exactly the same size, so sometimes you can't get away with that. But... Um, again, it's kind of a time saver here. To figure out these heights, so this is H1, this is H2, and this is H3, what I'm really doing here is, if this is my F of X right here, I'm finding F of 0.5, and then I'm finding F of 1.5, and then I'm finding, whoops, F of 2.5. Okay. Um, and I'm cheating a little bit because so I don't think I have a calculator here handy, but um, I will just use my phone calculator. And I will say, um, so 0.5, sorry, 9 minus 0.5 squared. And then 9 minus 1.5 squared. And then 9 minus 2.5 squared. And so I'm going to go, oh, of course I missed that one. This would be 1 times 8.75 plus 6.75 plus 2.75. Which is, let's see, this is 15.5, 17 uh, 18. I think it's 18.25 square units. And if you remember a second ago, we said that our actual accurate answer is somewhere between, whoops, you can't see what I'm doing there, it's somewhere between the 22 and the 13. So 18.25 is sounding like a more accurate representation of this area. I still can't say that it's the exact correct area, but I'm, I'm kind of zooming in on what the correct area should be. One more. Let's do some trapezoids here. So these are going to be like sideways trapezoids. They're, they're right-angled trapezoids. So I'm still going to use kind of my same intervals here. I'm going to go ahead and draw these lines in. But what I'm doing this time is I'm using these points to make diagonal lines that are going to turn into trapezoids. So I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to draw a line here. And this one's kind of hard to draw, but I'm going to draw a line here. This last one actually ends up being a triangle, not a trapezoid. But um, same idea. Same idea I'm going to use. And so then these here are my bases. This is like base 1. This is base 2. This is base 3. And technically base 4 would be down here. And then my heights are these values down here, which this is a 1 and a 1 and a 1 again. But these are my heights of my trapezoids. So I'm kind of picturing it like, oops, I don't want to turn this for you. Um, this is the height of my trapezoid. This is one base. This is the other base. Okay, so my area of a trapezoid is 
um, one half height times base one, which is, let's see, I'm going to write these values in here just so I don't have to keep looking them up. This is nine, this is eight, this is five, and this is zero. One half times one times nine plus eight plus one half times one times eight plus five plus one half times one times five plus zero, okay? And it probably would have been easier for me, um, I mean, kind of an alternative to that area of a trapezoid formula would be to do base one plus base two and then just divide by two and multiply by the height, especially with that height all being constant. The height was all the same. So another way I could have written this is just let's put my height outside and then I'm gonna say nine plus eight divided by two plus eight plus five divided by two. By the way, I would not expect you to write all of this out, but you are expected to show some of the math, like the calculation that you did to get to your answer. So you don't have to write it both ways, but you do have to have some way of showing the math that you're doing here, okay? So let's see, this is 17 divided by two, so that's 8.5. Um, this is 13 divided by two, so that's 6.5. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, looking awfully similar to that midpoint one. So that's 14, 15, I think we end up with 17.5 here. Okay. Um, it's kind of a tough call deciding whether this is a better estimate than this. This is definitely still an underestimate, right? There's still some gaps there. Um, with a trapezoidal Riemann sum, actually that overestimate, underestimate has to do with the concavity of the graph. If I drew something that was concave up, um, my trapezoids would be an overestimate. And it, you would understand that if you sketched that. Um, so this is definitely still an underestimate. So I would probably say my, my accurate area is somewhere between these two values. Okay, I'm narrowing it in closer and closer. And of course, we're going to learn some calculus eventually that will get us the fully correct right answer. But these Riemann sums, again, are just way of getting better and better estimates, okay? Okay, so let's do one where we don't have a picture to look at. Um, and these are super common on the AP exam. You're going to see lots of these. Um, consider the following function with these values shown. So we don't have a picture of the function. We don't actually even know what the function looks like. All we have is a selection of values. And I want to know um, if I do a trapezoidal Riemann sum what will my total area be? Okay, so working through a problem like this one, my distances between my x's, if you think about it the way we had the graph drawn up here, my distances between the x's, those are my heights of my trapezoid. So this is going to be, I think these are all going to be ones, but I do want you to know that you are going to run into problems where they're not all the same. So I'm going to go through here and just label all of these distances as ones, and those are my heights of my trapezoids. And then these guys down here are my bases, okay? So these are my um, base values when I'm finding my area of my trapezoid. So to find my Riemann sum, I'm going to take um, my height, which is 1, and then I'm going to multiply by base 1 plus base 2 and divide it by 2. Plus, here's another height for this. And then I'm adding these two bases together. 12 plus 8 divided by 2. Here's another height. And then that's 8 plus 10 divided by 2. And then one more height of 1. And then 10 plus 2 divided by 2. Okay? Again, those ones make this problem really boring, but um, 6 plus 12 is 18, 18 divided by 2 is 9, um, 12 plus 8 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. So when a question says, show the work or show the calculations that support your answer, something like what I just wrote down is what they would expect to see. Um, that's an 18 divided by 2, so that's another 9, and then that's a 12 divided by 2, so that's a 6, so let's see, 28, 
plus 6, I think this is 34 um, square units. And so if I wanted to write this as an integral, using integral notation, just so we kind of have that on our radar, I would say the area under the curve between 0 and 4, because these are my endpoints, 0 and 4, of this function, and I don't know what the actual function is, so I'm just going to say f of x dx is approximately equal to 34. Okay, again, it's approximation because I haven't actually calculated the real area. I've just used these trapezoids to kind of take my best guess. Okay, that's it for Riemann sums. Um, so again, Riemann sums are ways to estimate integrals um, and integral values. It's a way to find the area when you don't actually have an area formula to work with. Um, we are eventually going to learn a more analytical way to do this, but right now we're kind of still just clunking through with geometry. So um, please let me know in class if you do have any questions, um, and we'll be practicing this a lot.